Hi everyone, let's get started. Welcome back. And uh, today we, we are talking about defects, all about defects and the defect life cycle and you know, the kind of attachment or you know, uh, the type of bonding a QA engineer is actually having with a defect. So let's see what it is about. Uh, defect is some unusual behavior in the application that we are testing. So something which is not usual and how do you come to a conclusion that something is actually wrong? So the base reference for us is a requirement document. So whatever is in the requirement document, based on that you will develop your test cases and write your expected behavior. So the expected behavior when it is not matched with what is the actual behavior with whatever you are testing, that's when you will come up saying that it's a defect. So we'll open a defect whenever these two like you know expected versus actual uh, whenever there is a difference between expected versus actual. So in case your company is following a JIRA methodologies, you will find the acceptance criteria in every JIRA. So your acceptance criteria is your requirement there. Based on that, if your application, your testing is not meeting uh, the functionality is something different than what is mentioned in the acceptance criteria, you will raise a defect. So let's see what are the types of defects. There are two types of defects. One is latent defect and the other one is a masked defect. Latent defect is the one which has been in the system for a long time but it has never been noticed. So the defect exists in the system because we haven't met the exact conditions to reproduce it. So till now we haven't got uh, like you know the test cases or the test scenarios covered were not written in such a way that we were able to actually reproduce the defect. So do like you know when we are actually testing our applications there will be some scenarios like this. So we have to be prepared and you know better late than never we have to get them fixed before giving sign off. So this is one kind of defect and the other type of defect is called masked defect. So masked defect is something which is actually hiding other defects in the system. Something, some defect which is hiding other defects in the system. The definition is a little tricky but you know try to understand it. I will repeat it again. Masked defect is a defect which is actually hiding other defects in the application. So let's take an example here. Um, for example, uh, let us think that you are testing an application called Cookbook. Cookbook is a place where you can search any recipe, search for any recipe you want. You can just enter in the search button like you know where whatever you want and you will find all the list of recipes related to the keyword that you enter. So you have a database where you store all the recipes and you are testing this application and there is one more functionality in this wherein you can add your own recipe. You have got a wonderful grandmother's recipe and you can post it right there in that application by just clicking the add recipe button. So whenever you click that add recipe button, there will be a window which will be popped up asking you to enter your recipe. So at some point like you know after entering to some extent you can save that as draft come back at later at some point and then post it. So these are the functionalities that you need to test. So let's suppose that you are testing this application but you have missed adding you know the test cases for add function add recipe button. As a QA engineer we should never ever miss any of the functionalities at all but you know just to understand the concept of mask defects better let us assume that you know you are missing that add functionality, add recipe button completely. For some reason, maybe you miss that Jira, maybe you don't know that it is there. And that is disabled. That should be enabled, but it is disabled on the UI, but you never ever notice that there is a button there. So first thing is that's a major defect. The button should which is to be enabled is disabled. Because you never clicked it. You never know that a window would pop up where user can enter his recipe, save it as draft and post it. We never know how many defects it is having like you know the potential as a QA we should always think that you know whatever is not tested by us right we might have like 10 to 100 defects there we don't know because we never tested that we never opened that at all. 
so here like you know the defect the functionality whatever we are missing like you know add recipe button because we did not notice that button which is being disabled on UI that's a defect because of that whatever defects are inside that window are getting masked so these are called masked defects which are like you know very very critical defects so always make sure like whenever you're getting a defect to retest right okay you make sure that the subsystems are also working as expected so in this case you for good like you know let's think that you notice that it is not enabled and you immediately you know what is this button okay you got the functionality oh this is to add recipes okay this is disabled why is this disabled raise a defect immediately ask developer to fix it and once you get the defect to retest inside like you know after it is enabled you would expect a window to be popped up right make sure you are able to completely test it thoroughly like you know try to save a draft and then post a recipe so this is like you know this is a masked defect masked defect definition i would repeat it for you again it is nothing but a, ma a defect which is actually hiding other defects in the application okay which are not detected at a given point of time so it means that there is already a defect which is right now in your application that is masking so many defects which are inside just because we left the testing add recipe button we missed so many defects which are inside that window which is popped up so make sure we do avoid such a situation so like you know test coverage should be in such a way that you completely thoroughly cover all the functionalities without masking any of the major functionalities okay i hope you understand the difference between latent and masked defects let's see what is the next thing to learn root cause so why are we talking about root cause here the root cause is something which is to be done by a developer our job is to directly assign defects whenever you see like expected versus actual whenever you find any difference in this you just blindly you know open a defect and assign it to a developer but as we are we have are in this industry as we are into software testing we should know every term like you know every size so everything whatever is related to you know every term you should understand all the terms of the defect life cycle all the phases what developer is doing and you know end to end it's better to understand end to end so that's why what i've done is i have taken like you know three or four major root causes that we come across in day to day life in defect life cycle and i'm elaborating on each of these so the first one is a code issue like you know the straightforward path for a defect you in the step number five, one you found some unusual behavior that's when you open a new defect right so second step is opening a new defect here i'm talking about uh, you know the quality centered perspective you know the steps that i listed are related to qc or the application life cycle management which is like the most important defect tracking tool for qa so you open a defect and step number 3 is you assign it to a developer so reassign is something which happens within developers we actually don't have to know about it but it's good to know like you know you we have ui developers you have middle tier developers and you have database developers so sometimes some unusual behavior you might think that it's a ui issue and assign it to a ui developer but he he understands that it's not a ui issue it's something related to a, a stored procedure or anything like you know he might reassign that to a concerned backend developer so the, the step number 3 is all about assigning the defect to a developer step number 4 is developer looks at the defect and then he looks at the screenshots that are attached so make sure like you know whenever we are opening a defect we clearly write the steps to reproduce the defect it's always important because it it will save lot of time to the developer not only like us and also to the developer you know he don't have to juggle like you know how to get on to that point like what is the issue here and all if you clearly mention the steps to reproduce he'll just follow those and you know he'll understand the root cause immediately and we can get in turn the fix code fix immediately so make sure you clearly write the steps to reproduce and also attach the screenshots like you know proper screenshots where the issue is what is that unusual behavior where is that and everything so once he understands he understands the root cause he'll fix the code 
and then he'll perform testing at his end and he will resolve the issue so he will change the action to resolve whenever developer is done with his you know part like when he fixes the code and tests by himself he will change the action to resolve and immediately the status of the defect changes to ready for verification and he these three fields which i have mentioned here resolution root cause category and root cause these three have to be updated by a developer so i just mentioned so that we get a clear idea like what's happening inside like once we assign the defect what is what are the steps that are being carried out with by the developer so resolution here in this case he fixed some code the root cause category is a code issue and the root cause is defect in code and once he resolves this and you know status is changing to ready for verification qa will be notified by a email that you know it's ready to test so as a qa engineer like you know you open the defect thoroughly test it test all the subsystems okay you make sure that it's working fine attach the screenshots and then you will change the action to close okay once it is resolved then you will close the defect these are the steps that these are the normal flow okay like whenever you have any code issue when you find unusual behavior you assign it to the developer new defect open a defect assign it to a developer developer would in turn reassign it to whoever is concerned like a database middle tier or ui he will resolve the issue he will test it by himself and then he will assign it back to the qa engineer like you know once it is in ready for verification the qa engineer will test it again attach proper screenshots and close the defect now moving to the next root cause there is something called functions as designed so it's not that good for qa engineer you know like whenever we see some root causes functions as designed it means that you know qa person who is testing haven't understood the docu documents haven't read the documents properly and he misunderstood the required like functionality and he thinks that you know if something is really not working bad and uh, not working fine and he raises a defect wherein it is actually working as expected so when the requirements are not properly understood by a qa engineer what he does is he understood he thinks that something which is actually working fine the application has not correct so his expected behavior when he is writing his test cases right his expected behavior would be different than the what is actually you know wanted by the business so this is all about look you know to avoid this kind of situation what we can do is we have to check with business as many times as possible to get better understanding of the requirement if you have any questions ask them again ask them again until you get clear understanding don't start documenting test cases so because something is incorrectly understood by you you will raise a defect and that goes to developer he will analyze like you know what the issue is and then he'll come to a conclusion that you know this is not at all an issue it's not fixed because the root cause category it's not an issue you know what is the root cause it is functioning as designed what happened there is one there is no other way like you know uh, button here stating that qa did not understand uh, the requirement properly which actually saved us but you know we have to make sure we are reading the requirement properly and is understanding it correctly and then only raising the defect so in this case also what happens you will open a defect you assign it to a developer developer when once he looks at it he will understand that you know uh, he will understand that you did not understand correctly and then he will change the resolution to not fixed and it's a not at all an issue and he will say functions as designed give it to qa then we will see uh, then we will go back to the requirement correct wherever we missed it right like wherever gaps are we will try to fill those gaps by asking questions and understanding it again like you know reading it again and again and then close the defect this is one root cause what's the other one the other one says incomplete requirements this is good for us like you know not i, I don't say it's good but it's sensible what happens is for example you know there is a rate or there is a button on ui which should accept numbers that's what is written in the requirement document so the but, uh, name of that button is rate so rate can be one to anything right so rate cannot be zero but developer did not think of that he just says okay he says number okay let me put from 
zero to anything. And when I'm testing, it is my application is actually accepting zero rate, which doesn't make sense at all. Then at that point, for me, it is unusual. It is not making any sense at all. So I open in the step number one, I'll open a defect, assign it to the developer. And then developer, then at that point, right, developer will check with business. Here, like, you know, what is this? You said, like, you know, it should be number, but uh, QA raised a defect saying that zero should not be allowed. Then business thinks and says, yeah, yeah, actually, you know, that makes sense, right? Like, you know, there is no zero rate. Please add that functionality now. Now, developer, what he'll do is he will correct his code and he'll add that condition there. That zero should not be allowed. So, there is a code fix, but the root cause category is requirement or documentation issue. It says that the requirements are not correct or requirements were not complete. So, we would get the code fix. We will check whether the condition, whatever we asked for is added and is sensible. So, if for a QA engineer, requirement document is the base. Along with that, some common sense is also required because, you know, like, you know, I don't say that developers don't have common sense, but, you know, most of the times, you know, some of the critical things which are actually, you know, make sense will be missed by developers because of their overload or whatever. So, it's a, our job to think that the application, you know, test that the application that we are testing is sensible, you know, it should make sense or, or like, you know, though it's not written in the requirement, in that case, if you find something unusual, right, you better raise the defect, get the requirement document itself corrected so that, you know, whatever code that you are signing off is going in a good way. So, this is one type of root cause and uh, something which is interesting and most important topic is deferred defects. We often come across this word called deferred defects, you know, can we defer this, what can we defer this defect, what do you mean by deferred, the most important interview question also. So, let's see what happens here. In this case, again you find something unusual, you will open a defect, assign it to a developer. Now, day after tomorrow is your sign-off. The defect is still open. You will check with developer, like, you know, what's uh, going on with that. Developer says that, you know, yeah, we all are already working in multiple projects, you know, we are busy. Then what happens? There is, in my company, like, usually we have a go-no-go -no -go meeting. Before sign-off, right? Like, you know, before the code going to UIT or production, like, you know, before it moves from SIT phase, we have a go-no-go -no -go meeting. In that meeting, what we discusses like you know about the open defects if any now this open defect I, I tell business that you know because I have an open defect which is like you know not closed at all and this is the defect and this is what it is impacting as a QA engineer I should let the business know everything about the current status so I will tell that it is impacting the other two modules also it is the defect but it, there is a workaround this is how it is happening and once we explain the potential causes that arise with this defect and business, you know, it's, it's up to business to think whether to say okay or not. Now then business will think of it and say, uh, okay, let's do one thing. Defer this release to next sprint. Then what we have to do is like, you know, okay, we once developer says that, you know, I have technical challenges and I, we cannot fix this at this point of time and business confirms that we can defer this defect to the next release then we would update action as defer and make a proper comment in the comment section of the defect stating that you know we already talked to business about this business agreed to defer this defect to the next release so we are deferring this defect for this release okay we are deferring this defect to next release and also always better to i will always document the time like if it's a qa triage or a stand up call i mentioned that we did discuss this on so and so qa triage and we have been asking like the business team to confirm and business confirm and business is okay for the following workarounds if they are any so i'll document this completely and give a conditional sign off so how does this save us definitely this will save us because like you know there were situations wherein you know business because like the person whom we checked with might have changed or you know they might have been into so many projects that they actually forgot and they when they actually look something weird in production they'll send an email to the whole team saying that you know what is this has this not been tested at that time like you know we can show the defect id 
so like you can save ourselves saying that you know we already uh, we opened the defect for this we checked to with business before sign off business said it's okay to defer this so we are good. like you know now in this print we have to fix this issue so depending upon the correct uh, like you know level of effort it will be put in the backlog and it, this will be fixed in the later phase so generally like a spelling mistakes or something which has got a solution by doing some other work around those defects can be deferred not the high priority or you know like the potential defects but something which have a work around and which can be okay at that point of time rather than you know holding off the release sometimes it's better to defer the defects but it's always business or the product teams decision not at all a technique technology teams decision so deferred defects are those which are not being fixed at this point of time for this release but definitely we have to keep track of deferred defects and you know add them to a backlog business analysts should take care of adding them to a backlog and you know get them fixed like in the next phase or in the next sprint in case of agile so it's all about deferred defects now i have just taken a snapshot of a defect like you know whenever you say new defect in quality center this is how it looks action like you can open a defect whenever you select action as open the on the right hand side assigned to and assigned to name will be enabled so you can put the developer's name there you have to select your project name and all these in red are mandatory fields that have to be entered and in the bottom section in the description if you look take a look you have to enter the full description like what error you are having what is that that's obstructed you what do you think that's unusual and steps taken to create a fault like i said you like you know the steps to reproduce should be clearly mentioned and then what are you expecting but what is the actual result that you have seen on ui so you have to document everything and then in that left side under the details you see attachments you have to attach proper screenshots to this defect and once you submit the the concern like you know assigned to name whoever you assign the developer will be notified that the defect has been opened for the following with all the details so this is how this is a snapshot of qc and uh, before we conclude for today i would like to uh, mention few points that are to be noted uh, whenever you are opening a new defect right make sure that the environment is up and running like most of the times if like you know if they are deploying if the developer is deploying something or if the environment that you are testing is not ready you might assume that it's something unusual but actually it might be environment issue so check that it's good and running and it's uh, the code that you are testing is in sit phase then only you raise a defect second one is uh, for some business logics or critical issues yes so always better to understand the requirement thoroughly before getting started with your actual test so you have like qa triage meetings we'll have daily stand up meetings or we have the like, best thing we have emails so we can send as many follow up emails as we can until we get a proper information about the logics or the functionality so it, if the requirements are not clear in the step number 3 also like you know we have to check n number of times about the logic we have to get everything clear like you know you have to you can post as many questions as you want to get clear understanding because sometimes the developer also like you know i have seen some cases where the developer is not at all aware, aware of the domain like you know what he is testing why i mean what he is developing why is he developing that or anything but a qa engineer should have end to end knowledge like you know where is the data how is the data flowing how am i getting it like what are the downstream applications that are receiving my data okay if something is changed what are the other applications that are getting impacted so we should always have a very good domain knowledge we will have a good domain knowledge only when we ask as many questions as we can with the business teams so i recommend to track all the defects including those which are not reproducible so always better to track or oh, any unusual behavior as a defect so if you think that's a minor thing and you know if you neglect it at this point of time like including the cosmetic defects they might come as a production issues in the later phase and you know that would be like a bigger headache for a qa team so always better you track all the defects let the business defer them so if business thinks that that's okay like you know they are okay with the functionality or they are okay with doing some kind of work around let it come from business team wherein like you know you can properly document and close the defect like you know defer the defects but it should always we should always make sure that 
we actually open defects and track them in a proper way. Our job is to find something unusual, like, you know, we are getting paid for that road, so we have to do our jobs correctly. <laughs> so, if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to post your questions. I would reply them as soon as possible. Thank you all for your time. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.